Welcome to the special Christmas edition of... <laughs> <laughs> they think it's all over. <laughs> right, with Gary and Rory today is a comedian who's finally announced he's leaving the flat he shares with Frank Skinner. Although there have been one or two arguments, apparently neither of them wants custody of Stato. <laughs> it's David Baddiel. David and Lee's guest is an Olympic silver medalist who can throw the javelin so far that when he wants to practice indoors, he has to use David Gower's front room. <laughs> Steve Backley. <laughs> we start off with our goal celebrations round. We show each team a goal being scored and then being celebrated and ask why the players were doing what they were doing. Okay. Gary, Rory and David, your goal comes from the Premiership. And it's Wimbledon's Robbie Earl sticking one in against Coventry earlier this season. Wimbledon have been passing the ball nicely this afternoon. It comes in towards Earl. Great goal, Robbie Earl. Wimbledon have scored. Were they taught it by George Graham and it's called the backhander? <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Even though they're black, are they just very, very bad at high-fiving? <laughs> <laughs> Give me five! Oh, my hands got in the way. Give me five again! Yeah, or maybe they're patting themselves on the head but forgotten how tall they are. <laughs> Is it genuinely that... Um, Gary, Wim you can join in if you want. <laughs> what happened? That Wimbledon were knocking up balls over the bar at that time and Robbie Oil saying, I've got it under the bar. Is that what it is? I tell you what, I'm, I'm going to give you three points, although that isn't the answer. I'm going to explain well, why, because that's very weird, because what happened was we got a number of, of differing answers from Wimbledon, and that was one of them. So I'm going to give you the points. But when we actually turned up at the club, the goal scorer, Robbie Earl, had a different explanation. This time last year, we had a club celebration. Um, there was a function on. Dean Holsworth actually got his wallet out and bought a round of drinks and so got a standing ovation from the boys. So as things weren't going on, we decided to have another try at it when we scored a goal. So <laughs> Dean, Holsworth, uh, <laughs> Dean Holsworth for once generously offered to pay for a round of drinks. Mind you, Vinnie Jones was holding him upside down at the time. <laughs> Wimbledon is, of course, the only club in Britain where it's cheaper to buy a round of drinks for the fans rather than the players. <laughs> Incidentally, Gary, when we were at Wimbledon yeah. interviewing the players, of course you have a great friend there, and he's, uh, he sent a little message to you. Here's to you, Gaz. Happy Christmas, son. <laughs> the reason he threw the orange juice at the cameraman is because he's outside with the glass at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> OK, David Lee and Steve, it's the magic of the cup for you as Grimsby Town take on the self-same Wimbledon. And here's Keith Alexander scoring for Grimsby. Popper all to take the kick. Alexander, near post. Alexander! And behind that goal, a shoal of inflatable haddocks, a few bananas, <laughs> some fried eggs, and overall, a feast of jubilation. I mean, they've all got the haddock there, right? And I reckon Man City, they'd have five loaves and just two fishes, because they need a miracle, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> I think they might have a particularly gay following. They're not haddocks. They're not bananas. They're actually inflatable willies. <laughs> that was well worth waiting for. <laughs> Thank you. Do you know, it's funny thing about Grimsby, I've got to tell you this right, a few years ago... <laughs> a few years ago, the Grimsby Tourist Board, they issued these scratch and sniff cards, right? The idea was, was that to, to, to say that this is what it's like in Grimsby, you scratched it and you had the smell of fish off of the card, right? And a load of other cities started to follow suit and did scratch and sniff cards. Except for Birmingham, they just told people to stick their fingers up their arse. <laughs> You, um, <laughs> you didn't do Birmingham on your recent tour, did you? No, I had to cancel right. Birmingham show. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, it's something to do with the fact that, you know, Grimsby's a, a fishing port, yeah? Do you know Spurs, when Gary was playing from the fans wanted inflatable ears? <laughs> inflatable ears? But they cancelled it because the real things were bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Done you a lot of good, Mr. Gower, hasn't it? 
David have leave it at that. David have an inflatable boy, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> inflatable Manuel, yeah. I'll give you the three points because they got theirs on the dubious well, 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 basically, you just gave him three <laughs> points for the wrong answer, so... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you may as well, what, get three for the right answer, I, don't you? I wish yeah. you'd mark my O-levels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you took any. <laughs> <laughs> All right, they weren't mine. <laughs> <laughs> OK, here's Grimsby fan and all-round fish expert Jimmy Connor to put us in the picture. Well, it's obvious. Grimsby's associated with fish. And this is the largest fishing port in the country. The mascot was known as Harry the Haddock, but he should have been known as Tommy the Trout. This is a haddock, and this is a trout. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of that round, Gary's team have three, and David's team have three. Round two is our injury board. Each team picks a number from the board, revealing a sporting personality and an object. And what we want to know is how the object caused an injury to the person and put them out of action. David, Lee and Steve, you're first, if you'd like to pick a number. Mr Gower, Mr Gower. Oh, what now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had a lot. <laughs> Well, that's How bad long news. have you two been cooking that up? <laughs> I just want to say, that's bad news for me. <laughs> Go on, number. Oh, uh, uh, seven. Seven, OK, let's have a look. Right. That's lovely. Yeah, that's boxer Steve McCarthy and a shoe. So how did some ladies' footwear injure one of Britain's finest light heavyweights? Was uh, Frank Boff wearing the high heels? <laughs> <laughs> did he get run over? Who? Oh. The boxer in the street. Well, how does the shoe come into it? Well, it was in the lorry at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Did he get the shoe stuck in the ring? Sorry, that's a what? bit... Uh... <laughs> Stephen Backlund! <laughs> our Olympic hero! <laughs> doing a shoe in the ring joke! <laughs> Javelin thrower put shoe up arse! <laughs> I think what it is, right? What it is, he was having a fight, right? Oh, Traditional for Buckley. Well, that's handy. And uh, he was winning the fight, and the other geezer's mother, she comes running in and starts up with him with her shoe. Of course, everyone knows that. Let's see how McCarthy came a cropper. Here he is fighting against Tony Wilson back in 1989. A very, very close look at it. And there's somebody on the ring apron. There's somebody on the ring apron. <laughs> I think it looks as though it may be Tony Wilson's mother, and yes, it, it is. And she's taken a shoe off, hit McCarthy on the head. Oh, <laughs> I'm afraid it's right. Three points, yeah. Tony Wilson's <laughs> mother did get into the ring and gash McCarthy in the head with her shoe. Astonishingly, and this is absolutely true, Steve McCarthy actually lost that fight when he assumed he'd won and went back to his dressing room. In fact, the referee hadn't stopped his opponent at all. He'd only stopped his mother. So McCarthy was disqualified for leaving the ring. <laughs> Wilson's winning streak, incidentally, didn't last long. In the rematch, he was knocked down in the third round by McCarthy's Aunt Beryl. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gary, Rory and David, do you want to pick a number? Eleven. Eleven? Yeah, that's uh, Dave Besant, the Southampton goalkeeper, and a bottle of salad cream. So how did the latter injure the former? Just, by the way, for your information, David, Salad right. cream is what poor people have instead of mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> Any ideas? Um, I, can't, I can't really say what actually happened, but the excuse he gave the nurse was that uh, he walked into the kitchen naked one night <laughs> <laughs> and s slipped backwards and fell onto the salad cream. <laughs> Could he get a dressing down at half time? Oh! <laughs> oh. You are a yes. comedy yes. god! You know, <laughs> I bow to you! <laughs> yeah, I saw you, Lee, over there with your pen up. You? Got a dressing down. <laughs> Wasn't in the, um, stretching up for the salad cream in the cupboard and it fell on him. He's thought, oh, he's well, it's three points to Gary. Three points to Gary, yes, absolutely correct. <laughs> yeah. That's why you did yeah, the answer I know you'll find this hard to believe is that Dave Besant, during his spell at Chelsea, dropped the bottle of salad cream on his foot and broke it. <laughs> so at the end of that round, Gary's team have six and David's team have six.
Lee, did you know uh, somebody sent us in a cutting? There's a player who's playing for South End called Lee Hurst. You kidding? We wanted to mention it because of the injuries, because uh, we couldn't get any film of him. But apparently, he got a brilliant injury this summer. He, they were doing training on an army obstacle course. He jumped over the wall on the obstacle course, but got stuck in the sandpit on the other side, right? And he was winning the race. And then the rest of the team all came over the wall <laughs> and landed on top of him, and he was out for four months. <laughs> so intelligence obviously comes with the name Lee Hurst. <laughs> right, next up is Sing, <laughs> sing When You're Winning. You're Our celebration of terrace humour. We're going to play the team some supporters' songs and then stop them, and all they have to do is tell us the next lines. David's team, your song's pretty straightforward or it would be if you were regulars on the terraces of East Fife. <laughs> it's a hymn of praise to their local rivals, Cowden Beath. You can probably see why we aren't actually regulars at East Fife now. Yeah. <laughs> it's because they speak with that atrocious accent, isn't it, Mr Cowden? <laughs> <laughs> It's ace, Dave. It's, it's privilege having you on here. Thanks, right, mate. Big mm. athlete, mate. You know, I was going to say it's a real privilege. I was wondering, uh, you train, obviously, regularly to be as good as you are, yeah? You've been taking the piss at me, actually. Oh, no, you said it. What no, gave no, you that impression? Oh, no, the, point I, the point I was going to make, Steve, is that when you, you're doing a javelin, obviously, you're, you're throwing a javelin load, don't you? All the time. Yeah, you're right that's handed, what I do, yeah. Right yeah, yeah. So you spend hours and hours throwing it with the right hand, <laughs> like that, just chucking it. <laughs> Do you ever get really bored and just fit yourself, I know what I'll do, I'll sit on my hands until it goes numb, and then it'll feel like somebody else is throwing it. <laughs> they come from near Loch Kelly. <laughs> oh, yeah. They come from near Loch Kelly. <laughs> they haven't even got a telly. They all stand outside Dixon's. <laughs> Any other... It's going to be Haven't got a telly? No, no. No. Yeah. Did they just lose it and go, they come from near... Yeah, David Gowers, answer that. <laughs> yeah. He went, they come from near Le Gale, they haven't got... No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Good effort, Dave. It might be it. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, <laughs> no. Well, there was no point, was there? Really, there's just no point in going on. <laughs> well, just... You're not batting He's... there. <laughs> <laughs> They're all pissed and smelly, the fans of Cowden Beef. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you three to that. <laughs> yeah, here, in fact, like is it. what they like sing it. on the concrete slopes like of it. Bayview Park. Cowden Beef's blue shirts and skillful football earned them the nickname the Blue Brazils as opposed to the Blue Brazilians, who are a bunch of cold, depressed men trying to get out of Middlesbrough. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's team now. North London's the venue for you, uh, for your song. It features the vocal talents of uh, Tottenham Hotspur, an old club of yours, and they're singing about their rivals. Surely Graham's magic, he wears a magic hat. Dead easy, that one. It goes, Georgia Graham's magic, he wears a magic hat. Which is why he won two titles, two League Cups, the FA Cup, European Cup, Winners Cup, which no Spurs manager, not even Jerry Francis, could match that! <laughs> is it just Georgie Graham's magic, he wears a magic hat, he wears gold blimey trousers, and he lives in a council flat? <laughs> At least that's what he tells the tax man. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was that. Yeah, I wish it was that as well. Georgie Graham is magic, he wears a magic hat. He's never lost 6 1 to Bolton, like our old dreadful tat. <laughs> Georgie Graham's magic, he wears a magic hat. He hates exciting football and keeps his back four flat. Oh, very oh. good. <laughs> Georgie Graham is magic, he wears a magic hat. He gave a blo some bloke an envelope and said, put the cash in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll give you three points for that. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty close. Wow. Yeah, let's hear them. Georgie Graham's magic, he wears a magic hat. And when he saw the agent's bug, he said, I'm happy. <laughs> Can't argue with that, it's fair enough. So, at the end of that round, Gary's team have nine and David's team have nine. <laughs> Now, the next round is all about publicity. We want to know the stories that lie behind a pair of publicity photos. 
David's team. Here's your photo, first of all. <laughs> it's Gary Lineker and friend. But the question is, why did Gary do this? I've never seen Gary in a hat before. <laughs> Was Gary coming home after a night out with the boys? Don't say coming home, yeah, you'll start well, Dave off. <laughs> <laughs> Did he return home <coughs> after better. a night out with the boys? And, was... um, and he had a few scratches on his back, and this was his excuse. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a great excuse. Oh, sorry, Michelle, I was out with Freddy yeah. Krueger. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's really going to get away with that, isn't he? Well, he, he could prove it now. That's true, fair enough. Does, does Gary look like that? Because Freddy Krueger's just offered to wipe his ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's either that or he's just seen the sweater in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> does Gary take him round with him so that he can get the last crisp at the bottom of the packet? <laughs> Gary, what's the answer? Do you know? Come on, Gary. Is it a restaurant? It's something to do with. Um... Halloween or Friday the 13th or something. Can, yes. you, put that, can you put that more something vaguely? I can't, no. <laughs> I can't believe you were with Freddy been... Krueger and you can't remember. <laughs> it doesn't one. happen on Nightmare on Elm Street. You say, oh, there's yeah, this bloke with big... What? You're talking about a bloke mm. that played 57 times with Peter Beardsley. <laughs> 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 a night out with Freddy Krueger is not that memorable. <laughs> <laughs> you were right. Oh, right. <clears throat> it was a restaurant. Yeah. yeah. Restaurant, not I'll give you one point for that. The theme of the party was that you had to dress up as an appalling nightmare figure and someone clearly had the clever idea of turning up as Gary Lineker. <laughs> <laughs> Over to Gary's team now. Look at this photo. David dressed up as a judge. <laughs> you know a lot. <laughs> Shouldn't he be wearing a wig? <laughs> 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 it's a photo on his business card that he leaves in phone boxes around London, isn't it? <laughs> All your disciplinary needs catered for, you know. <laughs> Water sports, PVC, Greek, just ask for Fluffy. I thought it was an ad he did for Nat West, wasn't it? Mm, you little tinker, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, well done. Yeah, well done. yeah, it was in fact an advert for Nat West. David was dressed like that because he originally studied law before he became a cricketer. <laughs> in his short time studying the law, David Gow would only act for the prosecution. Apparently he was crap at defence. <laughs> Nat West also have loads of old pictures of Lee, although they're extremely blurred and he's wearing a balaclava. <laughs> So at the end of that round, David's team have nine and Gary's team have 13. <laughs> it's time for our teams to grope around in the dark now, rather like in the previous rounds, as we play Field the Sportsman. David and Lee, you're up first. Would you like to get down there? Oh, festive blind. These are nice, aren't they? Mm. <laughs> Can I just say something, Nick? Yeah? I don't know why we... Me and Dave, as you're probably aware, are pretty much... Well, we're shit at this round, aren't we? <laughs> I think we should just have at home with the sportsmen. I think we should just well, be allowed to spend a weekend with them and we might find out who they are. <laughs> <laughs> Check the mail, answer well, the phone. Who is it you wanted to speak to? Oh, <laughs> well, we'll bear that in mind, Lee. <laughs> OK. <Can> we... <laughs> you can have 90 seconds. <laughs> 20 seconds to feel your way to an answer. Blindfolds on, and can we have our first mystery guest, please? <laughs> OK, your 90 seconds start now. Oh, oh yeah, got it. Got a big yeah. ball. Has he? <laughs> got two hands on it. Got a watch and all. Yeah, it's going. <laughs> <laughs> Usual kit. Be careful what you say. People wince oh. at the very mention of this oh. man's name. <laughs> <laughs> wince? Is that a clue, Nick? We're not very good at that. Yeah? We're not very good at clues. Can you have another one? It's a name that makes people feel ill. <laughs> <laughs> it's a name that makes people feel ill. Doctor, uh, nurse. Mr. Pooh. He got it. You've really grown up today, Lee. <laughs> oh, thanks very much. Look at his name on the back end. Is he? Mr. Pooh. <laughs> Mr. Pooh, yeah. Mr. Pooh. You may have heard his name on Crime Watch. Crime Watch, Crime Watch. 
know much. Let me think. Uh, Uncle Charlie? Have you been on it? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a million miles away. Um, uh, Uncle, Aunt <laughs> Uncle Ted. <laughs> Hang on, let's go oh. through. Cousin Mickey, no, he's in Spain. Uh, <laughs> what, the name? Uh, 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 You're doing letter names wins. <laughs> <laughs> OK, there's your time gone. Put, take your blindfolds off. And it is, of course, <laughs> Lee Hurst. <laughs> He's not in my family, he's got air. <laughs> OK, Gary and Rory, your turn now. All those clues, made ill, in the family. Didn't leave me there at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. all right. And can we have our second mystery guest, please? <laughs> I'll give you a clue. It's Mr. Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> Your 90 seconds start <laughs> now. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> He's got his... Oh! <laughs> 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 Rory, it's a people lying down. <laughs> <laughs> the light, lots of them. Is it at the Arsenal Christmas party? <laughs> I can smell they... smoke. Is, it, is that you? <laughs> right. Is it the Jurgen Klinsmann fan club? Are they men or women? Which way are they facing? <laughs> What's this? Oh, there they. Their feet are in the air. Ah, well yeah, well done. Huge Probably. helmet. You got one as well. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Hang on. How this many? one's. Ow! <laughs> yeah. I was holding something. I don't. Is that a... Flare or something. Is it a parachute tip? Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a go? Red, red Devil. Yes, Red Devil, correct. Well done. That was good. David's team have nine, and Gary's team have 16. <laughs> and just when you thought life couldn't get any more exciting, we've reached our final climactic round. It's the bung-taking, away-shirt-changing name game. And just for Christmas, we're going to ask our guests to give out the clues, all of which will actually be the names of sporting personalities. We want the other two to guess what the personality's nickname is. So the nickname, please, of every sporting celebrity you hear. Winning team goes first, which is Gary's team at the moment. That's you, David. OK. OK. And your 90 seconds. Remember, we want the nicknames. Yep. Start now. Eminem Hughes. Crazy eh. horse. Correct. What, yeah. what did you say? I was going to say whinging eunuch. But right. <laughs> <laughs> Ray Reardon. Sugar. Sugar Ray? No. Dracula. Correct. Oh, very good. <laughs> Orenthal Simpson. No, oh, that's the uh, kitchen devil. <laughs> <laughs> OJ, as in the drink, got a bit more of the drink. That's no, the juice. Yeah. The juice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Juice. Billy Bonds. Premium. <laughs> Bonzo. Bonzo. Bonzo, correct. Jimmy White. Colombian White. <laughs> well win. Oh. Well win, correct. Mike Tyson. Big Girls Iron. Garter. <laughs> that's right, I think. Iron Mike. Iron. Yeah, Iron Mike, yeah. Peter Beardsley. <laughs> I'm sorry to do this to you, Gary. Miss World. Cosimodo. Brian Moore, not the commentator whose head looks like the London Planetarium, but uh, <laughs> the other one. Right. No. He's a, the rugby a player. By, is it a no, it's a, no, no, it's a type of dog. Oh, oh, type oh, of dog. A very, yeah, very, another oh, very dangerous oh, dog. Uh, Pitbull. <laughs> yeah, correct. John Daly. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Yes, I do. Golfer. Golfer. Cleaning it's like Dan, Dan. Da 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 No, not just singing again. <laughs> 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 what did you say? What did you say? What did you say? The answer was wild thing, right? Well, but Gary you... thought you had to do the rest of the music before he got to it. Well, you've done very well. You moved on to 25, so Steve, oh, you, uh, your 90 seconds start now. 
Me and both. Beefy? Sounds good. Joe Frazier. Smoking, Joe. That's also me and both of them. Roger <laughs> Black. Uh, Rog? <laughs> <laughs> um, as in, like, a, a young deer, a baby deer. Baby deer. Fawn? Um, Joe. Fawn. 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 Yeah, oh, Bambi. Uh, Fabrizio Ravinelli. Oh, blimey. Ravioli. Pizza. Um, <laughs> Quattro two words. Rav. Two, Rav. Words. two words. The big pizza. Ill. Yeah, first one's deep not white. <laughs> white yeah, stuffed crust. The second one's <laughs> you get it from a dove or a bird or a feather. Shit. Here you go. <laughs> David Lloyd. Bumble. Here you go. Ian Woosnam. Pissed. Um. <laughs> uh, is, uh, Woozy, no, it's, it's, it's yeah, never well, Welsh, never Welsh golf attack. Woozy? What do you feel if you feel sick? Woozy, you said it four times! <laughs> four times. <laughs> feel Florence sick. Griffith Joyner. Oh, Flo Joe. Martin and a fire. Woozy. Martin and a fire, I ain't saying shit, he's big. <laughs> uh, chariots, chariots, chariots. A okay. fire. Good. Steve McManaman, as in Scooby-Doo. Oh, well, so uh, I thought oh, I meant Scooby-Doo. Uh, yeah, yeah. Pesky Kids. No, one of the characters. Um, like, not, not <laughs> Scooby-Doo, Filmer. Shaggy. 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 Darren Anderson. Darren Anderson. Dazza. Dazza. That's the last one. Shaggy. There you go. <laughs> Philip DeFreyers. Shaggy. Um, uh, <laughs> what's he called? Uh, what's he called? Duck. There you go. Quack, quack. Yeah, Daffy, no, Daffy, 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 Daffy DeFreyers. Is it? <laughs> a ranger Sanchez Vicario. Well, you're reading. Oh, 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 yes. uh, oh. Goes like a train. train. Two feet. Rub it. So that means at the end of this special Christmas edition, David's team have 20, but Gary's team are the winners with 25. <laughs> As it's Christmas, I've got both teams of presents, so oh. the captains can have them. There's one for you. Oh, what a surprise! <laughs> it's the video. It's, 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 it's indeed. Sure they, they, they think it's all over video. Christmas video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, actually, Nick, do you mind? I've got a present for Gary here. And I've got one for you. That's nice. Yeah. Oh, oh Gary. Well, I know. I've got one for you. I've got one. I've got two. Nothing for me then. Nick, I've forgotten you, mate. Yeah. Phrase. There you go. Oh, sweet, isn't it? Yeah. Good luck, mate. It's a tiny, tiny video. <laughs> oh, yeah, lovely. David Gower's greatest innings. <laughs> <laughs> so, thanks to David Lee and Steve, Gary, Rory and David, my name's Nick Hancock. Diego Maradona's cold isn't getting any better. <laughs> Until next year, goodbye. Football Fest next on BBC One, memories of Euro 96 when football came home with Des Lynham. <laughs> and a specially recorded edition of They Think It's All Over is available now from BBC Video.